Hi everyone, this is Thomas with Polyga, and today I'm going to be talking about some advanced features in the Extract 3D plugin that can potentially save you a lot of time. In today's discussion, I'm going to show how you're going to take multiple 3D scans to do a partial reverse engineering of that data in order to use that data in your assembly mode for analysis and uh, further redesign. Uh, so long story short, generally when you scan a lot of scan data, you have to fully reverse engineer that scan data in order to use that data inside of SOLIDWORKS. In the case of Extract 3D, you, you don't have to do that at all. You can make use of that data without having to fully reverse engineer it. And, to be, and you're also able to do pretty advanced things with it as part of both a part file and an assembly file. With this first part, all I'm going to be doing is reverse engineering the center axle por portion of it because that's what uh, I'm going to use to mate with a couple other different scan parts that I'm interested in. So uh, first things first, what I do is I'm just going to take one of the planes. In this case, it's my right plane. And I'm going to just uh, do a cross-section and then sketch starting from my right plane. As you can see here, uh, it doesn't quite slice exactly where I want it to. So that's no problem at all. I can move my slice slightly over to here, which, is, which gives me the circle of the center axle. And then from there, I'm just going to start a sketch in my right plane. And this is a probably one of the simplest sketches ever, which is just a simple circle, which is all I'm really interested in. The I don't have to do it too closely. I just have to make the circle. And then I can use the Fit tool to fit the circle uh, onto my uh, slice there. And that, give, that should give me exactly what I need. Once I have that, what I'm going to do is also to just pull off the extents of the uh, of this little uh, center axle here. And I'll just do that by grabbing a couple of 3D points. So grab a couple points off that end and grab a couple more points off uh, this other end here. And that's it. So now I can take the sketch that I have previously. Uh, I can extrude it up to a vertex. So to that one over to that side and then the other direction to the other side of the vertex right here and I'll hide that now that uh, so as you can see if I hide my meshes it's just a simple cylinder that represents that center axle part that I've got on uh, this part here um, the only other thing I might do is to also generate a uh, a center axis for this as well I can just do that off of the, the cylinder object relatively easily so now I have a center axis reference geometry and a cylinder object with some mating faces. And for now, I'm just going to save this into a uh, test here, which is, I'll call it the front wheel, and replace that. So <clears throat> we'll, we'll do it the same. Now that we have the front wheel, what we'll do is we'll start another new file, and this will be our second part file. And in the second part file, what we're I'm going to do is to pull off the um, lower part of the front handlebars. And and I'll, I'll do a similar sort of, uh, of reverse engineer here, which is I'm not going to reverse engineer the whole thing. I'm just going to uh, recreate uh, these two mating surfaces that I'm interested in. And I'll do it the same way. Uh, that I did the other ones earlier. So the first thing that I'm going to do is just to pull off some points off of here as uh, 3D points to refer to later on. I'll just do it all in one sketch. So I'll pull it off of uh, both sides of this. I don't have to be too exact. Uh, I usually just eyeball it. We're not going to use all the points. I'm pulling off more points than I really need. So I now have those as 3D points in 3D space. And what I'll do is I'll create two new sketch planes. And the top plane, the right plane here is centered yet again. So it makes it nice and easy. Create some new planes out of it. So the right plane, I want a plane here. And from the right plane, I'll create a plane on the other side as well. So I have two new planes. From there, I'll do a quick uh, sketch or a quick slice. So that just gives me some little bit cleaner data. So 
I will start a sketch under here. Let's hide this other plane for now so it's not in the way. Uh, look at it. The yeah, that should work. I'll do the same thing here, which is to draw a uh, rough circle around the information I'm interested in, and then just to tell it to uh, to fit. The the geometry data that slice isn't exa isn't a perfect circle, uh, which is okay because I only really care to use as a mating surface anyway. So it doesn't matter if it's not matching the uh, the the real world part. And also, usually when you have scan data, the real world part isn't going to be a exact geometric circle 95% or 100% of the time, pretty much. And then also extrude this out a bit too. So extrude it out to uh, to that vertex on that side. And that gives me one side of it. Now I'm going to do the other side. And that was my other plan. Right here, I'll start a sketch on that side and I'll do the ex exact same thing. Which is to slice off, slice, start to slice so I can see what it is that I'm interested in. And uh, it's a little bit hard to see. Maybe right here uh, gives me something good. That's a little bit better, sure. So now I'll uh, work on that slice on this side. And what I'll do here is the same thing. I might, uh, and you can also, usually I hide the mesh as well. It just gives me a really clean, uh, clean way to do, clean way to do the sketching without it being in my way. Sometimes it's tough because things are in exactly where you, you want it to be. And in this case, the, the solid's in my way. So I'm just going to hide that too. So that's pretty good. I think I'll keep that. And then on my s features, I'll just extrude it out to there, keep that. And there we go. So I have the two sides now um, created. And I'll also create a center axis using one of these as well. So now we'll save this as the lower handlebar. <clears throat> so now that we have the handlebar portion and the wheel portion, uh, we can create a new assembly file that uh, puts both of those together. So I'm going to create a new assembly now. I can simply insert in the front wheel component and the, and the front wheel component right here. I can just place it. And now we have different wheel component in our assembly. Well, now we can also ins import a second assembly, which is the lower handlebar right here, and we can place it anywhere here. So now we have a fixed item, which is the front wheel and the lower handlebar. Uh, we can't s select the scan data, but uh, we can select the uh, solids and move that around pretty easily. But what we're interested in is mating these two together and doing some analysis to it. And ultimately, we want to do a big motion study with a bunch of different pieces of scan data. Uh, so what we can now do is take advantage of some of the assembly tools in SOLIDWORKS, which is to create mating relationships. So what we're going to do is to mate some of these surfaces together so that everything is uh, positioned correctly. So first of all, we can choose the two axes and I'll align the two axes together like that. And in this case, we want uh, this surface here to line up with this surface here. And you can see how quickly I can use some of the mating functionality to, to put the scan data together um, so that you can see everything in a coherent way. All of the slicing tools in Extract 3D continue to work in assembly mode. So it's a great way for you to do um, to look at clearance distances or to pull scan data into your drawings and to work with it in complicated assemblies so that you can do, for example, a slice it like this and uh, move it around and get an idea 
of how how it looks relative uh, to your CAD data and how much maybe clearance you've got or, or whatnot. So in, in addition, just doing a assembly with a handful of scanned data sets, um, we have a completed one of a much larger file, which is the completed motorbike assembly. So I'm going to lo load this one up, and it's much bigger. So this is about uh, 13 or 15 million polygons, so it takes a second for it all to load up. So in this case, uh, we've taken, uh, let's say, uh, four different uh, part files. In each of these part files, we have about uh, 10, 10 separate scans on here. You can uh, Maybe I can just do a quick cross-section right down the middle of it. And you can see uh, this is a cross-section of all the scan data sets. All, all various different colors because they're all different uh, part files and scan data, data and whatnot. Um, so you can do all of this. And what we've done is we've made it, mated them together and we've done a uh, motion study based off of it. So I'll make this go a little bit faster because it looks cooler like that. Um, as you can see, these none of this is CAD. This is nearly all scan data with just a handful of CAD elements that were reverse engineered and put together so that uh, we could uh, almost do a motion study with just scan data. Obviously, most of the time you'd have a lot more CAD data as part of it, but I can just kind of show you the power of uh, of having be able to use all the scan data without having to do uh, a whole lot of work. Assembling this was uh, really quick, as you saw earlier. Uh, not only that, uh, but you, all your slicing tools work as well. So you can take this and then uh, and then have it run. So th this is a pretty nifty use of the power of assembly mode inside of SolidWorks uh, while coupling that with uh, scan data. Thanks for your time. I hope you've enjoyed this little demonstration on how Extract3D can unlock the potential of 3D scan data inside of SolidWorks in not just part mode, but also in assembly mode. And also goes to show that how you can make use of your scan data without having to just use it for uh, a complete reverse engineering project.